what is going on to all my Umbrella Academy fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix series review and today we're breaking down one of my favorite shows on the platform and that is the return of the Umbrella Academy season three. Got a chance to check it out early courtesy of Netflix and I'm very excited to share my thoughts with you all on this new season. And I'm gonna let you know by in this breakdown, is it the best season? Is it the worst season? Is it somewhere in the middle? We're going to be discussing that and so much more in today's review. But before we get into it, if you enjoyed the breakdown, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns, and live streams, well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you enjoyed my review of season three of the Umbrella Academy, well make sure you're liking the review as well as sharing it. But more importantly, sharing your thoughts on this third season. Number one, which of the three seasons is your favorite? Who is your favorite? character of this new season what did you think about the sparrow academy and of course your thoughts on the twist the turns the major reveals the season finale and what do you all hope to see in the future of the show let's talk about it in the comments below so just a quick little rundown of what to expect in this breakdown since i did see it early and i'm releasing this on june 22nd which is the release date of this new season i'm gonna leave the first half of this video as a spoiler free review pros cons is it the best is it the worst so we're going to leave that to the people that haven't seen the entire season spoiler free first half second half once you finish the season we're going to dive deeper into the spoilers what really worked for me what didn't work for me my theories and predictions of what i hope to see in the future of the show so with that being said time codes will be in the description so if you haven't finished the season you can watch the first half spoiler free once you finish the season you can come back and watch the spoiler discussion Let's get into the breakdown. Let's start off with my positive. So first and foremost, actually, let's talk about expectations. Now, obviously, the show was delayed over a year with the pandemic. And in the kind of gearing myself up for this third season, I went back and watched season one. I went back and watched season two. And I love this show. <laughs> I love this show so much. This dysfunctional, hard-grade family, group of superheroes, were trained to be superheroes, broke up because they lost their brother, and another brother got lost in time travel, have to come back to figure out what happened to their dad and also save the world and I just love that journey in the first season love season two as well going back in time and obviously everything going on with Vanya and Sissy and everything with you know Allison and Ray and all the different stuff I reviewed the first two seasons on this channel by the way so you can check it out but I just love the show it reminds me so much of DC's uh, Doom Patrol very similar dysfunctional group of people that have to work together they have you know kind of shared trauma and a lot of similarities but if I were to pick I think The Umbrella Academy is just a, a stronger narrative and just a little bit better performances. They both are great in their own rights, but I just think Umbrella Academy just does it a little bit better. But hey, very excited for this third season. Here we are discussing it. Starting off with my pros, I gotta say the thing that really stood out to me were the performances. Now, the script and some of the, uh, the plots, we'll get into that a little bit later, but as far as standout performances, and this is really shocking for me because I enjoy Klaus, but my journey with Klaus has been very interesting because when we first meet him in season one, he was kind of, he, st he stood out, not from performance wise, I thought he was great in the first two seasons, but he was just like, man, he seems to be sometimes in another show. Like everyone else is a little bit more grounded in the situation and he's a little bit more over the top, but it makes sense when you learn more about him and understand his powers with the death and and him having his, you know, being suppressing his trauma, suppressing his his superpower with drugs and alcohol. And I became a fan of Klaus, especially when we get to season two with his cult and losing Ben and all that stuff. But when it comes to this season, he's one of my favorite characters. He ended up being one of my favorite characters because there's a couple major things that takes place in the season with Klaus without spoiling it. Number one, he discovers more about his abilities, which makes him, in my personal opinion, one of the most unique characters on the show, especially when he discovers what he's able to do with his powers of the death. So I thought from a self-discovery standpoint, I really enjoyed that narrative. And then switching over to the more groundedness of this character, he gets to spend more time with someone of his past that kind of opens up this ability, which I really enjoyed that narrative. So again, I know for some people, Klaus might be too over the top, not taking things too seriously. And he he's definitely doing a lot of that kind of over the topness and, and not taking things seriously in this season. But it was in that the kind of the balance of when he did learn more about himself and him discovering more about himself and also spending time with someone in this season that really kind of opened myself up to being like, Klaus is awesome. <laughs> Klaus is a really cool character. But my favorite characters of this entire series so far 
has been number five. Now, obviously, he's the wise man of the group. He's much older than his siblings, and we all know the reasons why from seasons one and two being trapped in time. But five to me this season was so interesting because, again, going back and revisiting season one and two, he was so, go- he was so gung-ho on saving the world, saving his family. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to kill this group of people. I got to do this to save my family and save the world. He's doing that in season three, but he's also taken a step back this season, which he is, you know, he's an older man now. He he is the oldest one of the group, uh, minus his appearances, and he wants to settle down in this season. I really kind of enjoyed that more laid back version of five. Now, again, he's doing everything that he possibly can to figure out the situations that our characters find themselves in this season. But at the same time, I love seeing just another side of five, right? Not always being on 100 He's toning it down this season, which I really enjoy. So those two, definitely some standouts, but they weren't my MVPs. The person that stole this season for me was easily and also the best performance. That goes to Elliot Page. He was fantastic this season. Obviously, we've known him to be Vanya in the first two seasons. And this season, he transitions over to becoming Victor in this new season. And I thought Elliot Page did such a great job in the role. I love how the first half really focuses on the character with him dealing with the events of Sissy and everything with Harlan in season two. And then pivoting that over to regrets and how can I make things different? How can I, you know, make a change for what I did in the past? But also speaking of change, I thought the way the show handled the transition from Elliot Page into him becoming, you know, Vanya to Victor, I thought it was handled pretty well. It wasn't forced or rushed and the season didn't just say, oh, okay, yeah, you know, you're, you're, um, you know, Victor now. They, they really kind of, you know, let it marinate. They let it kind of dive into the rest of the show. And like I said, when you see this season, he's really, the main focus of the first half and a lot of the major events is all connected to Elliot Page and connected to Victor which again performance wise Elliot Page gave the best performance of this season and he really has become one of my favorite characters of the series so shout out to Elliot Page thought they did a great job in this season and there's a lot of great stuff a lot of great moments that he does and has given in this particular season so he was my MVP but pivoting over to some other things that I really enjoy about this new season. For example, focusing on the story here without giving too much away, just kind of the main plots that we're focusing on, starting off with the Sparrow Academy, which are more refined. They're more trained than the Umbra Academy. I really thought that their dynamic at points was very interesting. Looking at characters we know from the past, kind of a newer, different version, a new timeline of the characters, and I won't get into the reasons and kind of their backstory, but Reginald, seeing him this season was very unique. Uh, Grace being being much different than we've seen her before. Pogo being different. So seeing those characters, those OG characters, having a new light shine on them was very intriguing. But as well as the threat this time around is much larger than what we've seen in the previous two years. So I will say... There are points in which the story definitely kind of goes off the cliff, which we'll talk about here in a second. But overall, I will say that I found the newer elements of the show to be refreshing at points. Now, that brings me into my criticisms here, and I'm just going to say it now. This, to me, was easily the worst season of the series so far. And I'm going to get into my reasons here, and it it pains me to say that because I love this show so much. But let me explain in this particular season, by the end, I really just didn't care much for these characters that I come to love. Again, I highlighted Klaus, Five, Victor. They were great, but the, the script was if, if there's an enemy in this new season, it's the show writers, it's the, the, the direction, it is very lazy and very just kind of convoluted at points and just diving deeper into it. The script was just extremely all over the place. From seeing some of the worst dialogue in this series, the plots just feel so familiar at this point. It's so repetitive. Like again, no spoilers, but we're dealing with the end of the world, we're dealing with figuring out a mystery about their family, and we're, you know, obviously the new element is the Sparrow Academy, which they're more or less kind of just, a, you know, they're more refined, they're more trained, but they're just a kind of, a, a, you know, similar to the Umbrella Academy. So we're getting a lot of familiarity, which unfortunately makes the stakes non-existent. Like, the stakes in this particular season felt so underwhelming. Like, our characters at points they didn't care, (laughs) which was so frustrating. Like, how do you expect me as an audience member to feel like, oh man, what's going to happen next? Where they're just poking fun of itself every other way. And and the comedy this season too this year just felt so 
very weak and very unfunny to be to say the least and when it comes to the sparrow academy i want to start with them first them the the sparrow academy to me felt like and, I, and this might be uh for some people uh, a bit of a dig but i'm not a big cw fan as i used to be the first seasons of flash arrow all this stuff is great this felt like CW, and I'm talking about new CW, which is just poor acting, poor writing, and all of the above. I did not like the Sparrow Academy, whether it's the new version of Ben, who I wasn't a fan of. He was just an asshole, just to be an asshole. And the look, as far as like him be, portraying to be the, the, the asshole of the family, it just didn't work for me for the actor performance. I thought Ben was very annoying. Whether it's the Raven Girl, I didn't find her to be too intriguing. We had a gentleman with a pizza face who I thought was a little lame. Name. the Jamie character I found to be very underwhelming there's a Sloan character who gets the most I'll say that I, I wasn't all that intrigued by her there's also their number one goes by the name of Marcus I found him to be annoying I say all that to say I found all of them to just be extremely bad actors like I, I'll be honest with you all I didn't find their performance to be engaging at all again if I were to take any of those members and say they were at least tr listen I'll say this they tried their best. I think, again, their worst enemy was the direction they were given and the script they were given. I think all the actors tried to do their best in their role, but unfortunately, it just was very CW level. I did not like the Sparrow Academy. Uh, they had moments, but for the most part, especially when you meet them for the first time, I'm like, wow, this is... Not was I was uh, expecting. I was hoping for something more, and they just didn't deliver it for me. Which brings me, if I'm speaking about the Sparrows, I'll be honest with you, the Umbrella Academy wasn't all that impressive. Whether it's Diego story this time around, who I found to be very inconsistent with him and Lila and their stuff that they're going through, it was just kind of like on again, off again, on again, off again. It just became very annoying. Again, very CW, very kind of anti teenager type of love story, which I was just annoyed by. Luther, man, how do you go from being number one, being on the mission of the moon, being, you know, very competent, very smart at points of season one, being, a, you know, a, a, the, the side guy of a hitman and being very, like I said, just being very competent. He has become a the butt of all the jokes. He is just so incompetent. He's so stupid. He's so dumb. And it's funny sometimes, but for the most part, it's just like, dude, I can't take you seriously. And then they give him this plot revolving around a, a, a romance I'll just say that that I just found to be it was just putting them two together was like oh my goodness this is just like dumb and dumber it was just so frustrating I, I they made me Luther was like never was my favorite but he definitely was my least favorite character of this entire season Luther was just on another one this season I'm like this dude is a complete idiot there's a way to play stupid there's a way to portray stupid like he's the Drax of the family right very kind of goofy clumsy but it's just the way that they write him is just so annoying in my personal opinion and I gotta talk about Allison who again I, I'm not discounting the performances I think all the actors try their best and I appreciate what they were trying to do with Allison especially coming off of season two with living in the 60s being a black woman in the 60s losing her daughter Claire trying to find her daughter in the season also losing Ray I get what they were doing it was just, again, inconsistent. It was just kind of just whenever it was so like hot and cold, hot and cold. And Allison has a lot to do with Victor this season. And I thought they shared some good moments, but overall it was just like, Allison, get it together. She and Luther to me, they're, who was number one as far as annoyance? They were going back and forth the entire season. Again, I just felt that the character's actions were just so over the top. And when it comes down to just, just my overall feeling of the show, I knew from the first episode of season three that it's, this was going to be a troubling season because episode one to me, the worst episode in the entire series. Like when you see episode one, you'll, some of you all might love it. Some of you all are like, what is he talking about? But I think a lot of you all will agree with me. Episode one was bad from a visual uh, effect standpoint, which the VFX this entire season was very clunky and very like, I think they lost a lot of their budget from season one and two, especially from season two, which was huge. This season looked very cheap. Again, CW, the, the hair and makeup was very inconsistent. There's so many plot holes, so many illogical decisions that was just frustrating. And, and that's just the first episode. And now I bring that up to bring up the last episode. The finale was just as frustrating. Now, I still think episode one was terrible and the worst of the series, but the finale was like, wait, we did, I went through all of this to get this. When you see it, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't a happy camper. And, and it, listen, it pains me to say this, but when we get to the end of this season, 
I'm not that excited for season four. So with all that being said, listen, I, it hurts me because I love this show. I love these characters. Do I recommend this series? Of course, if you've seen the first two, you, you got to see how the story ends, right? Or at least how they're shaping up to be because I do believe we will have a season four based on the, on the cliffhanger we have. But to me, it, it's the worst. It's the worst written season. It's the worst performed season. It has the worst plots. It doesn't really add up to much. It's just... A wasted season to me and, and it breaks my heart to say that so that's my thoughts on season, season three of the umbrella academy which brings me into let's talk spoilers let's get into the spoiler discussion here and just kind of this is kind of going to be a discussion piece episode one which was titled and i'm going to start off where i left my non-spoiler review which is talking about episode one which was titled meet the family again i can't stress it enough i thought episode one was the worst episode of this entire series when we first meet the umbrella academy and seeing uh marcus and again i mentioned the vfx like the whole green screen of him doing his workout, throwing his towel. I was so glad they got rid of him. I think he died in episode two. They got rid of Jamie and the pizza face guy in episode three. So I was glad they got them off the table quickly because I was there. I, I mentioned CW a lot. They were like straight out of a CW casting. Like they, they, they feel like they came right off of season eight of The Flash and jumped right into the show. Like the actors and their performances and the stuff they were given trash I, I was not a fan of them we get the whole Diego's a dad which the Stan Lila reveal and Stan being taken by the Google Blitz or whatever that was called that plot to me again I mentioned in my non-spoiler I'm a Diego fan man I, I really like Diego but they the whole him pairing him with Lila which I think they date in real life which explains some of their chemistry is good at points but again the writing was really bad for them and then her being pregnant and I was very frustrated with Diego and Lila this season. And, and Stan, I like that kid because I'm a big Euphoria fan, but I just didn't find their plots to be all that interesting. And kind of getting into kind of, again, the gist of this new season, they go to the new timeline based off of what happened in season one. They create this ball of, of, of a black hole that's eating the whole universe. So again, the threat is the biggest threat they've gotten so far, which again, the threat to me was so non-threatening because of the way the characters were acting, especially when we get towards the second half of the season, when Luther and Sloan are just magically in love. Love at first sight, sure, I'll give it to them because they're both idiots uh, if I'm being frank uh and, and again to each their own some people might love that love story I found it to be very comical but they get in love and by the time we get to the second half of this season and they're in love like again I mentioned in my non-spoiler portion they didn't care and when they didn't care, I didn't care. So like the threat level was non-threatening because they're just like, oh, let's get married. Let's do all this stuff, which I think was episode eight, which literally that whole episode was uh, was just a waste. They just, it was just a marriage. And again, this season to me was wasted. I could have went with six to seven episodes versus the full 10 that we normally get. So that stuff to me was just extremely frustrating. I don't want to keep digging myself into this negativity because I do want to talk about some positives. I mentioned how five to me, he was someone that took a back seat in regards to not being as gun ho as he has been in the previous two seasons. And I think Adrian in the role was fantastic. And I think there's something to be said about his discoveries, right? About him finding him his older self, who he finds out he was the creator of the commission and missing an arm, which I think there will be answers to him missing his arm because we got that in the season finale when the whole samurai guy cut his arm off. So the Pogo 5 reveal, which Pogo, I wish we get more of him. Like I understand it's probably a lot on their budget to have a CGI monkey walking around, but I thought Pogo and his inclusion was really unique and seeing his interactions with the Sparrow Kids was a really cool episode, which as far as kind of sticking to the positive, there was maybe, back, I would say episodes four and five to me were probably at its best. That's when the season was more focused, when it focused on what's going on with Klaus, when it focused on, you know, uh, what's going on with Victor and Alice, and that stuff to me was its strongest standpoints of the season, and then when we veered off to what's going on with Sloan and trying to get Luther to join the family, and I mentioned how much I hated Ben this season, and him and his sister, the Raven girl, to me, they were just going back and forth of just being so, who's number one, who's number two, and Reginald this whole season to me was just like, they never really explained, I guess the pill suppressed his, his, his powers or suppressed him being a, a which doesn't even make sense because he's an alien, like what, what, what pills they give him to suppress this alien's emotions and to really lead the family, that to me made no sense, the whole pill angle, but sticking back to the positives, um, 
again, to me, when the show was at its best is when it focused on the characters, when it focused on the Umbrella Academy and didn't give us all the other nonsensical stuff, which she wasn't really heavily involved, but Grace, the whole worshiping the Kutza Blitz was so annoying. Just her being just literally a robot the whole season to me was just, it made a character that I really enjoyed from being their mom to being, seeing her in 1963 and then just seeing her was wasted this season. Um, I'm just trying to think of any other points that really stood out to me as far as like, I'm trying to think of some more positive things to say. Really, I mentioned Elliot uh, Page. He was great this season. The Harlan, oh my gosh. I'm not a Harlan fan. If you all saw my review from season two, I didn't really enjoy Harlan and the whole sissy thing. Uh, And Harlan this season who... He kills Jamie and Pizza Face. He's responsible for that. And he's also responsible. That to me, the whole he's connected to the mothers and killed their mothers. Like how was he, by being connected to Victor, why does that have any connections to the other siblings? Like I I didn't really understand that that particular connection that they linked up to his character. Um, And speaking of linking up, Ah, man, Allison, I talked about the frustration for me this season of her just being so upset with uh, Elliot this season or Victor this season. It was just so kind of like, come on, guys, you're adults. Like, I understand you lost your daughter. I understand you lost your husband. But can we can we just be consistent? And then her and Diego going to that white supremacist bar and fighting. It was just, I don't know. I just found that stuff to be annoying. But Giving you all, I'm going to probably make a separate video because right now I'm just venting to you all. It's very upsetting because I love this show so much and it just frustrated me watching this season, seeing these great characters be written so poorly. But as far as season four goes, I think we're leading into this whole conversation. We end, and I'm going to make, like I said, probably a separate video talking about the ending more in depth, but we end with them resetting the, the timeline, right? And in this new timeline, Reginald, he has his wife back. He seems to be like the the, the big person. Like I don't know if he even, if he even created the Umbrella Academy nor the Sparrow Academy. I think he is like the hero in this world, singular by himself. And we notice that our characters they don't have their powers anymore, right? We see that Luther's now a normal looking person. He's not the big monkey sized guy. Everyone's powers is gone. Sloane is somehow she got lost in the elevator, which they don't really explain how. Allison was able to go back to her situation without coming to, you know, their back to New York or whatever. I guess that explains Harlan told her or say Reginald told her we can both get what we want. So I guess in this timeline, which I don't know how he was able to figure that out. I guess we'll find out in season four, but they got what they wanted, but everyone else didn't. Well, I guess they did because they they don't want their powers. I don't think any of them really want their powers. It's just kind of like there, but I don't know, man. It's it's just frustrating. Again, I have my notes here, and, and, uh, and I don't even really want to dive deeper into it because I'm just really frustrated with this season. And again, I'll probably make a separate video going more in depth with my uh, thoughts on how the ending, what it can mean for season four. But overall, it just wasn't for me. But that's just my thoughts. Let me know if you stuck around to the point of the video, if you watched this non-spoiler portion, and of course, if you're watching the spoiler portion, what did you think? Pros, cons, favorite moments, least favorite moments. Am I just a sour patch? Am I, you know, poo poo on your parade? Did you love this season? Did you hate it? Did you think it was somewhere in the middle? For me, as far as rankings, it's season one, season two, and season three all the way at the bottom. But share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you all for watching this review. I will be back for season four, and I hope the writers get back to season one and two and really give us something that's new, fresh, unique, and not repetitive. So, Here's to hoping. But thank you all for watching this review and watching this breakdown. Again, before you leave, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss any of my future breakdowns. Thank you for watching this breakdown. Hope you're having a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one.